chamber music is a piece of music that is written for anything from two players up to eight, ten, twelve. Eight, ten. There's even one for twenty-three. Um, Does that count as chamber music? Yeah, twenty-three soloists. Um, and most typically, you would think of a string quartet or a piano trio, which is what we're part of. And um, there are also piano quartets. So there are any any manner of combination. I, my first ever chamber music group was when I was 10 years old, so I was still pretty small. It was a piano trio, and I, I, I remember it very clearly. It was, I was just, as a cellist, I was getting a bit bored of playing all my scales and my cello pieces and getting to play with piano about once a term, and um, playing with other people was just so much more fun. Um, what was really valuable starting chamber music so young was that you learn not only the musical skills, but also the, the personal skills, working with other people who have different personalities and different ways of working. So I found that really, really special. For anyone beginning um, their chamber music endeavors, um, I think Haydn is always a good go-to. A little obvious maybe, but it, there's just a lot of great music out there. There's trios and quartets, and it's a really good way of finding a common sound and your sense of pulse together as a group and how to really communicate because there's a lot of dialogue between violin and piano. Piano and cello have to do a lot um, to create a bass line and equally in quartet there's a lot of conversation. It's a really great starter. For string quartets there's also all the early Mozart string quartets which are brilliant for that. There's a whole bunch by Boccherini which um, don't get played enough and are also in a similar vein. I remember starting off with my first ever piano trio, we played Frank Bridge miniatures, which are very sweet also, yeah, very good for beginner piano trios. For slightly more advanced string quartets, there are the um, Britain Three Divertimenti, which are often overlooked. They're instrumentally maybe a little trickier, but they're really, really great for ensemble practice. So, um, there are wind and string works. Actually, yes, quite a few yeah. clarinet quintets. They're quite fun. That's a clarinet and the string quartet. Starting with chamber music is a very exciting time um, as a player because usually you get to do that when, you, when you're just about able to play your instrument quite well. Um, and then you discover that actually other people who play just as well as you may have a completely different idea on how this piece should go. And it's, very, it's always very useful to really just go through something slowly, work out where things are supposed to interlock and in which way. Because we all have our, our faults and particularly when you're younger, you may have a slightly different uh, speed of counting to other people you're playing with. And so it's quite important to remember to slow it down to somewhere where everybody can really manage their part without um, without throwing anybody else off theirs. One of the things that I tell my, or I ask my students to do, is actually not to discuss or argue about what the difference of the ideas are, but just to play and really listen to what the music is saying. And usually that really works. So um, to, to defocus on opinions, but to focus on what the music is saying to you um, and something is often found collectively.